there are so many people on Twitter who were saying, you know, oh, you just don't understand. You just don't stop like trying to, you know, make something out of this. It's really not. This is just such a meaningful. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to say it. It's ugly. <laughs> God, this whole world is freaking elite. Welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. Today is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And in Boston, they have decided to celebrate in a very controversial way. You have probably seen it on Twitter. They unveiled a new statue celebrating Martin Luther King over the weekend. And to put it lightly, it is semi-concerning and the internet has had a field day. But before we get into that story, make sure that you like this video and subscribe to this channel if you've not already. And I know that 60% of you have not already because I can see that on my YouTube analytics. So subscribe and then make sure that you hit that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or an off the clock episode. So Annie No posted this on Saturday, I believe. And he said, there is a social media controversy about the new bronze sculpture in the Boston Common honoring Martin Luther King Jr. and Coretta Scott King called Boston's new Statue of Liberty. Many are saying it resembles something else. Oh, interesting. Where, where is Martin Luther King Jr.? I watched this video so many times over the weekend. I kept coming back to it because I genuinely did not understand what I was seeing. Like, I, I seriously, what is it? If you have not heard anything about it, if you don't know what it's supposed to be, that's objectively very weird. But you know what? That kind of is normal for modern art. Somebody replied and said, quote, modern art is a disaster area. Never in the field of human history has so much been used by so many to say so little. Okay, this reminds me, this is kind of an aside, so bear with me. I was in London and I went to the Tate Museum, which is their modern art museum. And I remember this piece of art. It was a freaking receipt. It was a normal sized receipt that you get at the supermarket. And it was put up on this huge white wall and it was worth thousands of dollars. And we were all supposed to sit around and we were all supposed to walk around and stare at this tiny grocery store receipt and pretend like it was some cultural thing. I pulled it up because apparently it is still at the Tate Museum. It is called the monochrome till receipt white. It's from 1999. This art piece has been sitting in museums since 1999, we have not moved on as a society and realized that this is not art. So sorry if I'm offending anybody, but here's the display caption. Can color be an idea? A shopping receipt may seem like a strange thing to put up on an art gallery wall. Yeah, it is, no shit. Okay, how can this be art? Rather than making a painting or a sculpture, there are many artists like Seal Floyer here who create art from everyday things. This is not art. She would like you to think about the idea behind the art rather than what it looks like. Yeah, that's what every modern art person says. Take a closer look at the receipt you will see that it is a list of objects bought from the supermarket that are all white. Imagine the objects and their whiteness and think about why this might be in a display about color. Look at that subtle off-white coloring. The tasteful thickness of it. Oh my God. It even has a watermark. It's actually a funny process. How many packets I've opened to check if the contents are white and then not bought. But basically it should equal or come close to a picture of white. You literally, went to a supermarket and you bought six items that are white. And then you said, oh my God, this is so profound. I'm asking about whiteness. Is it really a color? Let me put it up on the wall. Probably have some conversation about race and whiteness doesn't exist. This is nothing. Let's put, God, it's exhausting. Anyway, that is just one example of modern art that has stuck with me. I mean, maybe that, maybe that is actually the intention. Maybe the artist of this receipt really just wanted that stupid receipt to torment people for years to come and to think like, why was this in an art museum? Maybe it's the same thing with a Martin Luther King Jr. sculptor. I want people to be so concerned and so riled up about this. I'm going to make an art. I'm going to make a sculpture that is so confusing, that is just so strange that nobody will be able to understand it and it's going to haunt them, literally. Maybe that's the point. Maybe I figured out modern art. If rich people think it's good, I'll buy it. One art, please. Back to the Martin Luther King Jr. sculpture. Let's just look at this statue from some other angles. Now here is this angle again. The sculpture is called Embrace. It certainly looks like they are embracing in some sort of way. It may be involving a leg. If you catch my drift, I have children that watch the show, so I'm not gonna say what I'm thinking, but you know what? You probably get it. This is also less than ideal. What is this? A log, a male genitalia, like a, it honestly looks like a bag of bulk rice from Costco. I didn't know that Martin Luther King Jr. loved Costco, but apparently he does because that is what it looks like. Here's another one from afar. 
it, it's gross. Like that looks like some organ or like a ball of yarn, in my opinion. Like I just, it's called the embrace, but at a glance, I don't love anything that they're embracing. Somebody commented and said, if SNL still had a sense of humor, Weekend Update would announce in celebration of the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. This week, the city of Boston unveiled a statue of MLK's intestines. Yeah, actually that is what this angle from afar kind of looks like. No, but seriously, are black people in Boston or in general happy with the statue of hands holding a giant penis as an ode to Martin Luther King Jr.? No, I'm sure they're not. Another man replied and said, a statue called the Embrace was just unveiled in Boston. It honors serial philanderer Martin Luther King Jr. and his wife Coretta, upon whom he famously cheated with dozens of women. Someone posted a funny angle, so I looked up a different angle. It does not get any better. He also posted the photos that we already saw. Take as you will. Somebody else said, I don't understand why the left builds statues to him and insists he's an icon. They don't believe a tenth of what he said publicly. Colorblind? Try that in Seattle. Literally. If he actually kept the same values that he preached when he was alive, he would probably be a far-right extremist at this point. I don't see color. I want everybody to be the same and just love one another. Yeah, that's not the modern day left. So sorry, guys. I'm going to Canada. But anyway, now I will actually cut the crap because the statue was supposed to be meaningful. It was supposed to show, you know, love between a man and a woman. It is called the Embrace. And it is supposed to represent this iconic photo of Martin Luther King Jr. hugging his wife after winning the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. Somebody tweeted about it here and said, the Martin Luther King statue, now that we have a visual explanation of what we all viewed as weirdness, we can all breathe easier. In this context, it shows the warmth, the gladness, and victory. So you can sort of see there's their hands and her arm, but where are their heads and bodies? It is still weird to me. It is still strange. I understand what you are wanting to accomplish. Also, apparently there are different hearts when you look at it from different angles. And if you're standing inside the sculpture, you can see like sort of a heart. I'm sure the intention was there. The execution did not work. I'm just, I'm, I'm unafraid to say it. It is weird. That angle is much better next to the actual photo of them, but I still don't like it. I think that this could have been so much better. This is not Boston's new Statue of Liberty. I am so sorry. There are too many other important historical statues and artifacts and things in Boston. This is not going to be it, especially because this damn thing cost $10 million to create. 10 million. Thankfully, I think that a foundation came up with this sculpture and raised the funds for it and it was more charitable. So I don't think anybody's tax dollars paid for this. Correct me if I'm wrong. I hope not, because this is atrocious. There. Now it's art. I mean, it wouldn't be the worst thing our government has spent money on, but you catch my drift. But even members of the extended King family are offended by this. Coretta's cousin said in an interview this weekend, when it came out, a little boy pointed out, that's a penis. And everyone was like, yo, that's a big old dong, man, said the 43-year-old Oakland, California resident. If you had showed that statue to anyone in the hood, they would have been like, no, absolutely not. $10 million were wasted to create a masturbatory metal homage to my legendary family members, one of the all-time greatest American families. I mean, he pulled no punches, rightfully so, because if this was erected, for lack of a better word, in honor of somebody in my family, I would be offended because obviously the conversation is not about the good things that he did or their relationship, even though there is speculation there. It is about how strange it is and how inappropriate it looks from many different angles. Like that is not the impression that I would want it to have on the public. Like, absolutely not. I understand that you are trying to represent, you know, just the arms and you want to show, like, at least put their backs in there. What is, what is this? Just the shoulder? You don't even have the shoulder blades. That doesn't even look like any kind of back. That's just, it's like you got tired. You, you're like, oh, I don't want to finish it. Let's just leave it like this. And I'll say it's, I'll say it's an artistic decision. No, it's not. You're lazy. Thank you for watching the comment section. If you want to see more videos just like this, make sure to subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications, like this video. And of course, if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I'm Brett Cooper. See you next time.